Yeah, welcome back to KM6 LYW Radio, show about amateur radio or ham radio with an emphasis on digital or data modes, moving information back and forth in the information age, making ham radio more relevant and accessible in the information age. All right, so let's talk about the Raspberry Pi shortage. If we didn't have Raspberry Pis or some sort of computer to hook up to our radio, um, we wouldn't be moving data back and forth. We're going to need a device. And until, at least over the last couple of years, these things have been really hard to find due to the supply chain issues. Um, I'm going to go ahead and declare the supply chain issues over. I'm saying you can get your Raspberry Pis right now. Let's figure out how to do that today on KM6 LYW Radio. Welcome back to the show. Yeah, the cheap bumper music. We're still getting away with it. We're still getting away with it. That's ah, probably a repeat. It's turning into the, to a name that tune kind of thing, if you guys notice that. Let me see if I can make these, uh, rearrange my desktop here a little bit. So I've got some Raspberry Pis here. Uh, some of these I've acquired recently. Some of these, it was a while back. Let me make This is really complicated. I'm starting to get dizzy here watching myself move around here. So here are a bunch of Raspberry Pis. All right, let's move this here so you can see me face here in the corner. All right, so Raspberry Pis, we've got a bunch of them. Um, we've got one hooked up to an ICOM 705 here, as a matter of fact. So it's doing a, a data workload. In fact, it's an APRS TNC right now, and you can actually see it on my phone over here. Um, I don't know, I just I like filling all the spaces on my screen here. You ever notice like in movies, you know, you, you ever see computer monitors in the movies? They always have to be doing something. So I kind of feel the, the same way when making these videos. All right, so let's talk about Raspberry Pis and where to get them. So I've said it before, and I will say it again. If you're not using rpilocator.com to find your Raspberry Pis, you're not finding Raspberry Pis. And until recently, this thing was just white. I mean, you could set an alarm, and you could sit, hit click, auto refresh. You know, and every now and then you'd hear that sound and you'd see a Raspberry Pi model, one of these green lines show up and it'd be there for a matter of 30 seconds. Um, but that's that's kind of history. Now you see I'm sitting here and I see multiple models of Raspberry Pi. I see them available in my region, which is the United States. In fact, if you switch over to all regions, um, you'll notice that pretty much all models, including the coveted Pi Zero Two wireless, is available in some country somewhere. Um, you can see they're just available everywhere. Now, I did read some interviews with the Raspberry Pi Foundation, and initially they were thinking they would have unlimited supply, as as in supply meeting demand, uh, by summer. Yeah, we're here in summer. We're not quite there yet, and so they are saying that in fall we'll see all models. Some Raspberry Pis are a little harder to make, like Raspberry Pi Zero Two Wireless, for example, has a unique package where it has memory on top of a CPU. That's a little harder for the tooling, um, but it sounds like they do have contracts in place, and they are now shipping to hobbyists, whereas before they're shipping to their commercial customers because, well, hey, you know, that's how a lot of people made a living. So, rpilocator.com, we are seeing stuff in stock. So in this case, I see the Zero Wireless. Uh, I see a Model Four. Raspberry Pi Model 4 has been available all morning here. I've, I've been looking at this at the Adafruit. Um, that's the 8 gig model. Not only that model, but the 4 gig model is available at Adafruit. And then, of course, we're seeing the Raspberry Pi Model 3, uh, Raspberry Pi 3 Model A, which is a lot like the Raspberry Pi Zero 2 Wireless, which is the hard one to find. Uh, it's just kind of a different form factor. And it's only $25. So uh, we got to have Raspberry Pis to fuel our, uh, our data habits here to, to run our radios. Um, so let's take a look at each one one of these. What what kind of pie can I get you into today? It used to be you just bought whatever pie you can get, but, but now I think we're at the point where we can actually start talking about the different models, uh, which pie is right for you. Um, so I have a small smattering of pies here uh, on my desktop. Um, I don't have them all, I don't think. Actually, I'm missing them, Raspberry Pi 3. But you know, the one that really started it all was the Raspberry Pi Model 2. Let me see. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold it up to this camera. Maybe I can do it this way. Uh, yeah, this is, this is going to be, this is going to be confusing. It's a brain. <laughs> That's the Raspberry Pi Model 2. This is the one that started it all, uh, what, over 11 years ago, what, in 2012, I think it was. Uh, don't ask about the Raspberry Pi Model 1. I don't know. It's, I think that's a long story. I think they did come out with one eventually. But this is basically a single core CPU with 512 megs of RAM and, like, you know, a USB and network port. That's it. It didn't even have Wi-Fi. Um, you can't buy this one anymore, but, you know, I still... if 
where you can find these, honestly, is in a drawer somewhere. So look in a drawer somewhere. You probably have one of these. So this isn't going to run WSJTX, FT8, you know, JS8 call. It's just not going to happen, okay? It's not going to happen on the original Pi 2 uh, from 11 years ago. What this can do, and I've done it, and it actually does it really well, is run any of the packet workloads. So if you're doing AX.25, APRS, in fact, what you're seeing here where we have APRS and my phone connected to a, a, a TNC, doing APRS operations, this original Pi will actually do that, and it'll do it just fine. Uh, so that's the original Raspberry Pi 2 from 12 years ago. Um, more recently, they, you know, instead of building that one, they decided to make it into a new form factor, and they came up with the Raspberry Pi Zero Wireless. This is $15. You can get it right now. It was on that list I just showed you guys, okay? Um, again, this is a lot like the Raspberry Pi uh, two that I just showed you, it is not going to run FT8, a JS8 call, FL Digi. I've tried. It's kind of miserable um, if you do some RAM swapping. And I don't know, JS8 just aborts on the CPU. Some of the other things don't like the RAM. It, it's just unusably slow So for those modes. But if you want to run APRS or packet AX.25 bulletin board, this is perfect. In fact, you, if you look at the CPU load on this original Raspberry Pi Zero, it, uh, it's like 18% if you're running Direwolf. So Direwolf is kind of the, the modem and TNC at the center of all those modes. And it's, it's written in C. It's incredibly efficient running directly on the CPU. Um, and it's, again, only running 18% of the single core that you get with the original Raspberry Pi uh, Zero. And that's this, that's this guy here. So um, very impressed with this guy. Get it for $15. You know, I, even, I put these in the truck. I put them in the car. Um, these are simple, uh, real easy. You know, if you, if you screw up the soldering, you know, it only costs $15. And like I just showed you, it's, it's available. It has infinite supply now. It has not been out of supply for weeks now on rpilocator.com. So moving up from there um, is the Raspberry Pi Zero 2. This actually has wireless. Um, this one is pretty cool. I think this is the sweet spot. This one's increasingly hard. Well, not increasingly. It's, it's more available outside of the United States right now. They are doing runs. Um, what makes this one more interesting is the fact that it has a dual package here. So the, the CPU and memory is basically layered on top of each other. That's kind of hard to tool for. Um, you can't just go ahead and start printing those. It's a special CPU, actually gold-plated. You'll notice it has the letters AU on it for the, for the tags on it. So basically, this is a Raspberry Pi 3. Three, which we haven't mentioned yet, um, in a new form factor. Uh, and it has a quad-core CPU, basically the same CPU. Um, it doesn't have all the USB ports and things that we, uh, like the Pi 3 might have, but it just has the one here, one for power, HDMI. So I really like this one. It's from the form factor perspective. From a power budget perspective, this is the sweet spot. This is the Raspberry Pi Zero 2 wireless. Um, don't, as opposed to the... Uh, as opposed to the not too wireless. <laughs> so when we're looking at two of these, you notice one of them has the uh, the big silver uh, 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 Faraday cage on the Wi-Fi component. That's how you know you're getting the two. Okay, make sure when you're ordering these zeros, make sure it has the big silver um, cover on the Wi-Fi adapter. That's what that is there, that silver thing. That's how you know you're getting the zero two wireless, okay, and not the original one, which is this guy. He doesn't have a big old silver heat sink. This is the slower one, right? The original Zero. All right, so that talks about those guys. Um, so if you can't get a Raspberry Pi Zero 2 wireless, which I said is a sweet spot, uh, go ahead and get this guy. This is $25. This is the Raspberry Pi uh, 3A+. Plus. Not to be confused with, confused with the 3B, which I don't have a sample here, um, but this is basically the Raspberry Pi Zero 2 wireless, the one we like. Um, it's in a bigger form factor, and it has uh, the same amount of memory. They both have 512 megs of RAM. It's not going to be like for a desktop, but for like the DigiPi image, which is what we're seeing run right here, it runs just fine because 512 megabytes is my budget uh, for these things. So the last few Pies we saw here only have 512 megs of memory. They're not going to make a big old desktop with web browsers and word processors and things like that, but they are going to make ham radio apps. Uh, you're running them one at a time, run flawlessly. Um, if they fit in memory, they just fit, and the, the CPUs on these are fantastic. Again, this is a quad-core, like the Pi Zero 2 wireless. 
Um, so this multitasking is there and we have full size ports. So maybe you want full size ports. Um, you've got a full size USB port, HDMI port there. Though we don't use HDMI with DigiPi. We don't hook up monitors. That's that's kind of legacy now. We use, when we run Raspberry Pis, of course, you know, we do everything with our, uh, our cell phone apps or web browsers, right? You shouldn't need a monitor and a keyboard to hook up to your Raspberry Pi. You should just be able to bolt it onto your side of your radio like we've, like we've got right here. So that's the Raspberry Pi <clears throat> 3. A plus. This one is cheaper. Um, it's kind of like a kind of a blown up Raspberry Pi Zero Two wireless. I like this one, and, and all of these except these little screens that you know that we keep putting on these uh, for the Raspberry Pi. As you see here's the the Diary Watch screen on the DigiPi software image. All right, so that leads us to the Raspberry Pi Three B plus, which I don't have here in my hand. Um, it is a lot like the Pi Zero Two Wireless, again, which is one we like, which is a lot like the Raspberry Pi 3A+, Plus. only the five Pi 3B+, Plus will have more memory options. It blows apart that 512 megabyte barrier and gets you into gigabytes of RAM. So if you do want to run a full desktop, um, start with the Raspberry Pi 3B+, Plus and, and then go up from there to the, to the 4, for that matter, if you want a full-blown desktop. But again, if you just want to, like a, to run the DigiPi image, it will run on every Raspberry Pi here you see here, with the exception that the GUI apps obviously don't run on the old-fashioned original Pi and Pi Zero, okay? <clears throat> but man, the packet stuff just works great there. All right, so that's the Raspberry Pi 3B+. Plus. Um, moving on to the, the most latest, most recent Pi, the one everyone wants to get, and I honestly don't understand why this isn't my favorite Pi, to be honest. This is the Raspberry Pi 4B. Um, this is the fastest Pi that exists. It has the most memory options. It has the most uh, I.O. options. In fact, you'll notice these USB ports are, in fact, blue. That means it has USB 3.0, so you can run a full-speed disk drive on this, a uh, full-size networking port, HDMI, USB. Um, <clears throat> A fantastic device and you're thinking well Craig why wouldn't I just go out and buy this thing every single time well for ham radio operations uh, there's other things to consider than just raw performance so we usually have a power budget you know this guy's gonna suck up double the power um, of a traditional more traditional Raspberry Pi and we just don't need that performance um, so the power is, is one thing to consider on on this guy Let me pull this off of here and the price is killer on these. These are fifty-five to seventy-five dollars, depending on the memory options. Okay, so that's that's the deal with the Raspberry Pi Four. If you want to run a full-blown desktop with a web browser and you know word processing and run multiple lots of apps at the same time, definitely the Raspberry Pi Four is the way to go. But from a power perspective, I don't like this. It just takes too much power when you're out in the field on summits. Um, from a From a cooling and noise perspective, this usually requires some sort of active cooling. Um, they almost all require some sort of fan. Uh, you know, you can find heat sink options that aren't um, active. This one doesn't happen to have a fan. Honestly, if you're going to have a fan on your computer or whatever, and you want to have all that noise and inconvenience and, and power draw, just get like an Intel Nuke or, or just get a PC, right? <laughs> it kind of defeats the Raspberry Pi stuff. Um, but if this is all you can get and you have the budget and the power and you don't mind some sort of you know heavy or active cooling solution, uh, the Raspberry Pi 4 really cannot be beat from a performance perspective. So I do like this. And what is just crazy is this thing, these things are in fact available. We can get this right now. Uh, if, if you go to Adafruit or Pie Shop or Chicago Dist, um, you know, if, if you're also, if you don't have like a, a USB cable for your Raspberry Pi, if like, let's say you don't have an overpriced ICOM 705 here, um, all I need is a USB cable and I get, you know, sound and cat control and all that happens over the Raspberry Pi. Uh, over the USB cable. If you don't have that, you're going to need some sort of audio board. You know, what's odd is these don't really have audio built into them. So you're going to need something like the FE Pi. I know a lot of you are rolling your eyes. Oh, these are hard to get too, Craig. No, they're not. I just talked to Bud, okay? Well, emailed Bud. He says he's making runs of these. Um, he says he's taking orders and filling them. Um, I'm not giving out his numbers because that's his, his business, but uh, these are available from Bud, okay? So see if you can get these. I'll, uh, in fact, I'll put, 
links to these either in the video or in fact if you want to build a digipie go out to digipie.org <laughs> shameless plug there and you can see links on, on where to order these so these are actually handmade this fe pi audio card in fact this is the only audio hat device that you can get that has line in and line out line levels for audio um, this is it this is the only one you can get for a while there you could get the uh Audio Injector Z audio board. Uh, you can get this on Amazon. I just haven't seen this in ages. Uh, but to be honest, I would rather go handmade. And I and you know, I think this is honestly a better board from a hardware perspective as well. I don't know why. The other the other board has like a, a 3 dB cut in, in audio, which isn't insurmountable. It's just, it's just kind of weird. All right, so that is the Raspberry Pi uh, history, I guess. It's almost like a museum lesson or something. Um, all of these will work great. Uh, just keep in mind, if you get the original Pi Zero or the ancient Raspberry Pi 2, um, it's not going to run the GUI apps, FT8, JS8 call. Um, it's just not going to run those. Um, so when you when you load your DigiPy image and you see you know you see these these bottom ones here this where we can run these apps in a web browser you're not going to run those on the original old Pi Zero or Pi Two okay any other Pi these will run just fine uh, it doesn't these don't have the memory requirements either um, but if you want to run you know just at APRS TNC iGate Node Services WinLink you know Pat um, you can do all of that easily on the on every single Pi the old ones and the new ones okay so um, get your Raspberry Pis. Let me know where you guys are getting them. Um, in fact, this I've been waiting for these an alert, an alert to come up here. You can put this on auto refresh and an alert when new stuff is in stock. But man, these things are staying in stock. Used to be thirty seconds. Now it's more like three to ten hours. I'm seeing this stuff available. So get your Raspberry Pis. And then uh, what you want to do is get get your Raspberry Pi software going. Um, get a DigiPi image. <laughs> it, it, Honestly, it makes this channel go. It fuels the channel. If you get a Dig DigiPi image, the Digi what is a DigiPi image, Craig? Um, well, patrons of the channel get access to the DigiPi image, which is the software you're seeing running over here on this uh, ICOM 705, uh, this Raspberry Pi. In fact, it's doing APRS TNC mode. In fact, you might have seen it over here running in the in this phone. You know, we can do all kinds of TNC operations with this. I'm getting out of control here. Um, you know, you can do APRS operations. You can see who's around you. This is just the APRS aspect. This will do FT8, FL Digi, JS8 Call. It'll do WinLink. It'll do all the stuff that we, uh, well, I just showed you in the service menu. And it's all accessible via your web browser or your phone. You know, so I don't have a monitor or keyboard hooked up to it. You just don't need one, okay? We can do APRS messaging here. I'm, I'm going to get out of control. You know, maybe I want to send a message to uh, WX Bot here. I can just say... Uh, I don't know. I don't know what, what do you type here? I just type like weather and transmits a packet out of the radio, gets something back, got the acknowledgement. You can see the radio operating over here. <laughs> it's transmitting and receiving. And hey, I got a message back over APRS network using nothing, nothing but ham radio. Um, six miles. I'm north of Auburn. Excessive heat warning today. Hot. A high of 103. That's right. 103 Fahrenheit. It is hot. Hot, hot here. Okay, so the DigiPi project goes to patrons of the channel. Um, these are the patrons. These are you guys. So go out to uh, digipi.org if you want to get access to this. Uh, so patrons, I've got to thank you guys. Patreon.com slash KM6LYW. Uh, we got Steve Matsura, NTW Fu, Andrew BS, Jake, Ryan Collins. And we've got a new member here, here I wanted to highlight. We have Mr. King, uh, first name Sofa. Am I pronouncing that right? So uh, this is a Sofa King great donation. Thanks for being Sofa King awesome when it comes to donating to the channel. And if you guys keep sending me stupid Patreon names like this, I, I don't have the self-control to not take advantage of someone who comes up with a Patreon name of Sofa King. So Sofa King, thank you. The patron spotlight of today. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the contributions to the channel. Um, let me know how the DigiPi image builds uh, go. And send me pictures of your DigiPies when you build them too, would you guys? Um, Sofa King. This is the reason we can't have nice things. Okay, you guys know I'm not mature enough to, to have any self-control to not read some, uh, funny names. Okay, William, Jeff, <laughs> Rufus, Alfred, he Heath, Adam, M. Butts. Thank you, M. Butts. Yeah, I'm not going to go there. Uh, Mike, uh, Herm. Thank you, Herm. Cosette, Dusty, George. I'm going through these really fast because there are so many of you. Look, <clears throat> I'm not even halfway through. I'm not even looking and I'm still scrolling. Thank you, guys. Chris, Ron, <laughs> Peter. Uh, VK, you know, we're going international on this too. Hey, we've got a, an Australian call sign there. Hey, 
worldwide DigiPy user community here. We've even got guy with guys with Unicode names. I'm not. I can't read Unicode. Um, Dan, Herbert, Jason. Um, I didn't see Patty, but I noticed Patty. You put in a comment that you giggle every time I say your name. So Patty, thank you for being a Patreon. I appreciate it all the way down to Mark Thompson. All right, let me know if you're getting your DigiPies, guys, and where, how, when, what kind of pies, um, how you're building them, let how you're using them, how you're using them with amateur radio. Hey, my name is Craig. I'm in Cool, California. Uh, this is KM6LYW Radio, and I am.